In the last drum sander video, I made the tables for the top of the sander. And what I didn't get to was making the covers for the belts. Now the first step in doing this, I wanted to move the motor up and a little bit closer to the drum on the drum sander. So the belts would be a little shorter. So I made a platform for the motor to sit on. Then I made and attached the structure to hold the belt cover and then made the belt cover. The first thing I want to make is an adjustable attachment for the motor. And this will allow the motor to move just a little bit, which will allow for adjustability in the tension of the belts. So my plan is to make a hinged table so that the motor will move as the hinge opens and closes. It's sort of like attaching the motor to a door and then the motor can move. <laughs> I have a piece of MDF from the old CNC table that I can use. So I cut out the spaces or basically the mortises for the hinges that'll allow this mechanism to work. I didn't really have to do this, but it made it a little nicer. So once I had those mortises cut, I could make the holes that'll be in that table surface. Then I can cut out the shapes of the, of the tables or the panels or the doors, depending on how you want to define it. Now I'm going to make these sort of thick. So I'm going to glue two pieces of the MDF together. So I'm cutting out four pieces to make the two sides of this little system. And I can break the pieces out, and they came out pretty easily. Then I can glue the two halves together to make a thicker panel. On this first one, I used the holes that the motor will mount to to bolt the two halves together, sort of as a clamp. And I used some clamps around the edges. And on the second one, I just clamped them together. Then I cleaned up the edges once the two halves were glued together. And I can put the hinges in. And with the mortises cut on the CNC, I can just put the hinges in place and it should close together perfectly. I'm using a VIX bit to center the holes in the hinge holes so that the, the screws will be centered in those holes. Now I can move the motor out of the way and it's just attached to a piece of plywood which is screwed down to the base. And I took off one of the tables because it was going to be in the way. Now I can build the platform that the hinged piece that I was previously working on will sit on. And I'll just make that out of 2 by material. So I have a length of 2 by 12 that I can use for the height. And I can just cut that to the right size. On one of the sides, I needed to cut out a notch that will fit around part of the wood base that I made for the sander. I cut out the sides on the table saw, and then I cut out the, the rest of that cut out on the band saw. Then you can see how that fits in place. And I have the two sides made, and always checking to make sure everything's working. <laughs> Now I can make some cross pieces for this little structure. So I've got a piece in the front that's a full height, and then I've got two pieces in the middle that aren't quite as tall. Then I can figure out where I need holes for screws, and I can drill those holes. So I drilled them in one side, then I transferred the holes through the, the piece that I had already put holes in with the hand drill. And once I had all the holes drilled, I countersunk all of the outside sides of the holes where the screw heads will go. Then I can start to put this little base together. Now this is upside down, but it allowed me to make sure it would work with the hinged piece that I made earlier. <laughs> 
Now, as I was making this, I figured out that the short cross piece in the end wasn't gonna fit because of the way the leg of the drum sander comes down. So what I decided I'd do is angle that piece. So I cut off the top corner of that piece and put that piece in at an angle. It isn't really super necessary, but it seemed like I should do it. And I just drilled some quick new holes for that. So now the base piece is put together and check to make sure it's still working. <laughs> now I want to lift the motor and put the motor onto the platform that it's going to sit on to make sure the belts are going to run straight and the motor's in the right place. And I needed to get new shorter belts and I needed to figure out what the length of those belts were going to be. I also needed to make some cleats that would attach to the base on the floor and would hold the platform in place. And one of those needed a notch cut out of it. So you can see how that fits into the base of the sander. Now with one of the cleats in place, I can put the base in place and figure out where the other cleat on the other side needs to go and carefully keep that in place without moving it and screw that cleat in place. Then the, the cleats will fit inside the base nice and snug. Now I can screw the base to those cleats and the base will be held in place. Now I can attach the hinged piece to the base and I can put the motor in place. I'd thought at first that my holes that I had drilled for the motor bolts weren't in the right place, but it, it turned out they were fine. And the motor seems to be in the right place. And I can just put the, the nuts on those bolts. Now, what I want to do is put some longer bolts into the two halves of the hinged piece that will allow me to adjust how open that hinge is that will hold the motor in the right location and keep the belts at the right tension. I want such fine adjustment on the belts because the shaft on the drum sander uses babbit bearings and I don't want to put a lot of force on those bearings with the tension of the belt. So I want to keep the belt just as loose as possible but not so loose that it won't turn the shaft on the, on the drum sander. Now that the motor's in place, I can start building the cover for the belts. And the first thing to make is the structure that will hold the cover. So to get started, I, I took a photograph as perpendicular to the sander as I could. And I did a drawing based on that photograph, trying to figure out the shape of the piece of plywood I was going to need to make. And my first cutout was just with a piece of scrap plywood so I could see how close my drawing was to what I was gonna need. And I did have to adjust the distance between the two centers on the pulleys. And I changed the design just a little bit. I made the space for the axle on the motor curve so that the motor can move along its hinge within this piece of plywood. And I made the space on the other side a little bigger to fit the bearings for the drum. I also figured out that I needed some spacers between the structure that holds up the motor and this piece of plywood I'm working on. So that this piece of plywood will be held in the space between the pulleys and the two shafts connections. So these spacers had to be just the right width and I figured I could use them to help stiffen the piece of plywood a little bit. And they allowed me to temporarily clamp the piece of plywood in place so that I could get precise with the shape that I was going to need to cut out. So when I got to what I thought I needed to cut out, I got out a nice piece of half-inch birch plywood. And I cut out the pieces for the structure and the belt cover. It looked like it was going to work, 
but I could not get my piece to fit into the space that it needed to go into. <laughs> it's like, it's one thing to design something, but it's another thing to design something that fits. <laughs> so I started cutting off bits of this piece. I thought the lower corner was what was in the way, so I rounded that over. And as I cut more and more of that off, that didn't seem to be the problem. So I cut off a piece on the other side, and once I did that, it, it slid into place. And I can start to think about the belt cover and making sure this is all going to work. It sort of has to cover everything, but not touch anything. That's what I'm making. <laughs> so the part of the belt cover that I didn't make on the CNC machine is the piece of thin plywood that makes the, the curve of the belt cover. And to make that curve, I cut relief cuts into this piece of plywood. Then this piece of plywood can go between the base and the, the top of the belt cover. And I got it about in place and then cut it to length. And I cleaned up the little rabbit I made around the, the face of the belt cover. Then I put the pieces together. I started by wrapping the bendy piece of plywood around the, the face of the belt cover. And that worked pretty well. Then I tried to fit the base piece around the, the sides of the belt cover. And it, technically it should fit, because I drew it, it should fit. <laughs> but it didn't quite fit. So I, I sanded off a little bit of the inside and then it fit nice and snug with a little bit of pressure. <laughs> so I pushed that piece down a little bit, then put glue around the edge of the side, then brought the base piece back up over the glue. And that worked pretty well. It's pretty tight, so I'm not sure how much glue really got into the seam. And once I had it in place, I used pin nails to, to hold it. Now I can see if it's gonna fit, and it looks pretty good. So what I can do is cut off these tall pieces of structure, which means I need to take everything apart and carefully cut that angle into those vertical pieces and put it all back together again. But with the screws already in place, the screws go back into the original hole. So everything should go back into the same place. And I decided I needed a little more room for the Babbitt bearing on the sander. Once I did that, I attached the structural piece of plywood. And I decided I needed a little more room on one side of the hole for the shaft on the cover. And then once I had that, I marked where I wanted to put bolts through the cover. I really want the cover to be removable. So I, I got little bolts, I think they're, they're number 10 screws, with little thumb screws on them. So it shouldn't be too hard to take the cover off. And I probably used a few more than I really needed. But it looked nice with, with a bunch of them. Then I need to make a little attachment for a piece of plastic pipe to go over the shaft that sticks out. Probably the biggest question I've gotten from people watching this project, why I don't cut the long shaft off the drum of the drum sander. I really don't want to modify the antique machine. I'd rather build with what I have and not change the machine. I don't know in the future whether I'll need that or whether someone else will need that extra bit of shaft. So I made a little flange that'll hold a piece of plastic pipe. The connection between the flange and the pipe is just friction. There's no glue or anything. Then I will figure out exactly where that should go and trace it onto the cover then mount it to the cover. The seam in the cover of the side piece, I had meant to go on the bottom, but it ended up on the top. <laughs> so I think I'll cover it with a little scrap piece. So I just glued that in place. And the face 
of the cover between the base and the side was a little rough and I realized I had the perfect machine to fix that. <laughs> so I turned the sander on and sanded that face and that'll make the, the cover match up with the, the back piece a little better. I can put it in place and put all of the little bolts back in. And I got a little cap for the end of the pipe. And it works. And it's a little bit safer now. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> okay, I've run into this too many times. I think I'm just gonna cut it off. Maybe I'll just put some red tape on it. <laughs>